Welcome to This Week Health Conference. My name is Bill Russell. I'm a former CIO for a 16 hospital system and creator of This Week Health, a set of channels and events dedicated to leveraging the power of community to propel healthcare forward. Today, we have an interview in action from the fall conferences on the West Coast. Here we go. Hi, right, here we are at Health 2023 for another interview in action. We're joined by Ron Lee with Stanford Medicine. Ron, first of all, give us an idea of your role at Stanford. Sure. I'm an internal medicine physician, faculty in the Department of Medicine, and I work for Stanford Healthcare, which is the health system associated with Stanford Medicine as the medical informatics director for digital health. So I'm in our chief medical information officer's office. And basically, I think of my role as kind of elevating the clinical voice as we scope and implement new digital health programs, mostly virtual health model, virtual care models, things of that nature. I think a lot about the physician experience, how we integrate other aspects of our tech stack to enable some of these care models that are that's very important to the growth of our organization. And then as part of that role, I actually lead a group called the Stanford Emerging Applications Lab which I see as kind of the lowest R and DR of the office of the CMI. So it's a way for us to create, co-ideate, de-risk newer technologies, what we call emerging applications, that we think could actually solve pain points for physicians, solutions that aren't available in kind of the standard vendor space, but not quite ready for us to engage as vendors. And we have this little group that actually has an engineering group, you know, we build our own applications, we co-create, co-design, create this as a way for us to learn about our own clinicians and see what's out there, potentially strategically inform what we eventually can actually use in the enterprise. So what's the problem set? I mean, what's the problem set specifically for clinicians today that you're looking for solutions around? Well, I would say it's probably similar to the problems that we've been facing the last 10 years. You know, it hasn't really changed, changed. unfortunately. <laughs> it hasn't really changed, unfortunately. And I think, as you sure have heard from countless other folks across the country, it's, it's about, you know, how do you do an increasing volume of information? The increase in volume of patients here, really, all of which aren't bad things per se, but it's just that the way we practice is it hasn't adapted to allow the, your average physician to be able to deal with that. So for example, if we're if one of our goals is to expand the number of touch points with a uh, patient, I mean, that's a good thing. We want right. that because we want patients to get access. We want to care. We want to collect more data. But ultimately, some, the person has to do something, right? In order for that patient to become healthier, we still have to rely on clinical teams to assess the patient, use that data, and ultimately prescribe medication for surgery or whatnot. But it's still a very human driven process. And I still think we haven't quite figured out how to actually allow our workforce to sneak in the data that we already have, much less the additional data that is going to be generated from all these technologies in a way that allows the patient to actually be taken care of and frankly allows the workforce to be able to do it well. So it's, it's the same thing. And I think that now, now it's even more important because we now have all these tools available. We actually have more of a need to use virtual to expand our reach. So we have to make sure our, our, our physicians are able to actually take your patients in that environment. I assume at Stanford, your virtual solution is integrated pretty tightly with your new HR, yes. or do you have the silo problem that some others do? I'm sure there are always silos problems, but I think the philosophy, a core principle is absolutely has to be true. I mean, I'm sure there, there are all sorts of pilots and programs that we do that may not necessarily be fully integrated. So it's always a trade operator. So sometimes, for example, we work with SEAL, this group that I run. So we do a lightly integration because we want to spend the 500 you know, IT hours because we just want to see at a, at a high level, is this important? But absolutely, I think anything else, if we want this to be a core part of our care model transformation, that it has to be, that, that the EHR is how we deliver care. We'll get back to our show in just a minute. We have an excellent webinar coming up for you in November. We had an excellent conversation about AI in September with three academic medical centers around the topic of artificial intelligence. It really was exceptional, and we released it on our podcast channel so that we could share it with a wider audience. I wanted to explore that topic a little bit more, and I asked a couple of additional health systems to join us to explore the use of generative AI and other forms of artificial intelligence to see if we can identify some pragmatic approaches to how health systems are looking at taking advantage of this 
technology. The webinar is on November 2nd, 1 p.m. Eastern Time, 10 a.m. Pacific Time. You can reserve your spot on thisweekhealth.com. And one of the things we love is that you can submit your questions in advance and we can make sure that we answer those questions and keep the webinar relevant to the things that you're looking to talk about. So please join us November 2nd, 1 p.m. Eastern Time, 10 a.m. Pacific Time. Now, back to our show. So virtual care has gone, obviously during the pandemic, went way up, significant number of visits, and it came back down and, and sort of settled at a percentage higher. Are we seeing that stay the same, or is it growing, or is it still decreasing a little bit? We've seen the same pattern, right? I mean, at the height of the well, pre-pandemic, we're in the single digits. Right. Um, and it took a while to convince people that this is a real thing. I mean, there were the early adopters, but I think only the early adopters were using it. Right. And then now I think we're back down. I don't, I don't know the exact same number, but I know that we actually are actually a bit higher than average. I believe this was actually presented by our CEO at the most recent busy conference. But we are actually a bit higher than average, and there are many reasons for that. It is, I would say we're not, we're definitely not at the growth phase. But in some ways, I think that's okay. I think what we're, what we are now is I think we're much better at discerning what should be virtual, what should not be virtual, how do you optimize the virtual experiences. And also, virtual doesn't just have to be video, right? Like video is kind of the, right. the first stage. The video visit is like the first one of a virtual visit that uses video. I mean, of course, there are asynchronous modalities that we explore. The e console is a very popular one. I just think of these as building blocks that even by itself is valuable. But imagine what you can do if you were to piece together these building blocks into the creation of a new tier model that allows us to solve a, a specific problem when it comes to access. I think that's kind of where we are. So AI sort of hangs over the rafters of the entire sewer yeah. floor in there. And the, the music has picked up here as well. So health sort of does have a nightclub feel to it, doesn't it? Uh, but it has AI sort of hanging over there. Will AI impact the virtual visits, the telehealth side of, of the business? I hope so. And that's exactly what I'm focused on. I think what I like about what we're starting to see, even in this conference, I think we've kind of moved away from this idea that you know, AI is the product. The flowing AI about employee machine learning models. I mean, I think we still do that to an extent. What I actually really like about digital health, what I do is, I think of AI as, as a lubricant, as an enabler, as a feature of a product that is much bigger than just AI. So if you think about the product being, let's say, a new type of asynchronous care model where we can actually expand special care to a larger cash area, and, and we, have a, we have a staffing model, specialist, and whatnot. The product is the care, it's a service, right? Then if you, I always like to take a value chain analysis. So if you take a value chain analysis, you look at just first principles, you know, what prevents us from scaling this program by 10x? Well, I mean, one, one reason is that we just don't have enough people to take in all these consultation requests and service that, right? Why not? Because they take 15 minutes to have to look through the chart, if they get an e-consult or some type of request, they have to peruse through this pile of, this is, Oh, this, this chunk of text. Sometimes the consult question that's submitted to them by the primary care doctor isn't necessarily well written just because they're busy. So there's a lot of stuff that they have to do in order to just actually deliver on the service. That's where AI comes in. Then, becomes, then you identify the problem. The problem is how can we more efficiently, for example, synthesize large amounts of text and take, extract the key pieces that would enable consultations such that the human specialist can decrease their time from 15 minutes to two and so now to see where I'm getting, I guess, to know with large language models, you can see how that could actually help. So, so that's that, how I think about it. It's like yeah. AI is a, it's an enabler. It's, it's a feature, it's a tool that allows us to be, it, it makes a certain type of product possible in first place. Because so, if it takes 15 minutes, it's product will be possible. Yeah, so that, that 10 minute gate for consultation ends up expanding the staff potentially to reach scale. Like, I mean, it would, it would make the unit economics possible. It would just make it possible. So I think that would be an example of a type of how we would think about integrating AI to make a tech of virtual care products. Well, I want to thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Of course. Look forward to catching up again. Yeah. Another great interview. I want to thank everybody who spent time with us at the conference. I love hearing from people on the front lines. It is phenomenal that you shared your wisdom and experience with the community, and we greatly appreciate it. We also want to thank our channel sponsors who are investing in our mission to develop the next generation of health leaders. They are CDW, Rubric, Sectra, and Trellix. 
Thanks for listening. That's all for now. <laughs>